Hey guys, welcome to Artificial Intelligence Magazine. My name is Vicky and today we are going to discuss a little bit about uh, Stephen Hawking's this uh, a new headline that's around the news that superhumans are going to... Uh, you know, Stephen Hawking is dead but uh, uh, recently perhaps from a few of his papers, uh, you know, all those uh, all those uh, news media channels looking for spices and producing a habit uh, headlines like like uh, machines, uh, AI will take over the world, superhumans will take over the world and humans will invade the space, blah blah. The main point being how can we have, how can we have grudge against uh, something, right? Something that's not even here yet. I mean thinking about uh, how much uh, how much threat we have been as human beings to earth and to other species how can we think that intelligent machines will uh, take over us right i mean this is exactly where i would like cause this is for uh, for the general audience right you don't have to be nerd to know this just check out some of the alan musk interview you know we generally get the, we generally get the wrong type of idea when it comes to artificial intelligence i mean so many scientists uh, have said that if, if there's going to be machines, it's uh, they are probably probably not going to come in our generation. Something like it's, they call it singularity, right? Singularity, uh, the notion that when a super intelligent AI will be formed, uh, it will be some sort of uh, some sort of singularity, like uh, something like answers to all the questions. So we keep inventing these versions of uh, artificial intelligence, you know, out of the blue. Without, without evidence and knowing that uh, they are going to hurt us. I mean, isn't, isn't this amazing when we say that they will attack us, like well, when machines will attack us. Where are they? I mean, the machines aren't even here yet and there are good chances that uh, we might not see uh, intelligent machines in our lifetime. I mean, perhaps uh, millennials will be uh, long gone by then. However, uh, Technology is uh, growing at such a rapid pace that you can't be exactly sure, you know. I mean possibilities, all the possibilities are there. It is very possible that we might be able to see artificial intelligence in our lifetime and which will be an amazing experience. It will be, you know, it will be something to uh, live for. Like something that you have fantasized uh, all your life about. You know, all your life you have fantasized about something that uh, like about machines and finally when you see it in reality uh, that should be an amazing experience and and of course as a tech nerd i'm looking up to it now putting that aside look artificial intelligence is so many things today right and uh, and most of things that or uh, technology most of the technology that exists today uh, the digital technology uh, which has some sort of factor of intelligence so we can call it ai right see there are uh, so many versions of it like most of the AI tech that's uh, currently being used today can be categorized as uh, uh, into automation. So automation today is really nothing new. I mean, you can see, uh, though, have you seen those Boston, Boston uh, Dynamics videos in which uh, the robot, I mean, the recent video was quite amazing. In that video, the robot, you know, just walk forward and takes uh, two consecutive leaps upward just like humans, it's so realistic, you can, you, you can just look at it and be amazed at its physical capabilities. So likewise, uh, robotics is developing and all these things. And you can also go on, uh, on YouTube and check out uh, videos of drone performing amazing, aerobat amazing aerobatics, you know. But here's the thing, all the things are now part of automatic. I mean, if something uh, that involves physical aerobatic or tricks or anything. No, this is not intelligent. Being able to recognize faces is not intelligent anymore. <clears throat> so face, uh, face recognition tech is also archaic. Today, uh, machine, uh, machine vision, I mean artificial intelligence uh, and the research, it's, uh, more, it's more looking up to, you know, something like something that can give us signs of intelligence, something that can teach itself, something that can grow and learn by itself. So what scientists are really, uh, computer scientists are really trying to do in, during these days is, you know, focusing on interactivity for, for software 
to be able to interact with the reality, real world and understand things. I mean, uh, until now the software, the mind of software has been like living inside the digital world, right? And all the experiments, uh, everything are being performed uh, within that virtual world. If you have seen that video in which, uh, uh, a Google video, right, in which, uh, in which AI taught itself to walk and it's a funny video in which you can see it's walking in all the funny manners. And now recently Google uh, partnered with Unity 3D Engine, uh, a company, a game making company, right, game maker, and they'll be uh, collaborating on some, some sort of project that can serve both Google interest and of course it'll be a, a quite a experience for Unity guys too because because AI is involved and they could you know somehow use that tech to train their NPCs or better their NPCs. Anyway, they have some sort of common interest and and I'm sure they'll uh, make great to By the way, uh, being alert, anything, you know, any breaking news, exciting about technology, it just hits you. That's how you know you're a tech nerd, you're a tech dude. So when Google and Unity come together, you really feel like your veins, veins pumping. So if you get that feeling, uh, that's a good feeling. So moving on, the discussion started from uh, the latest paper, the paper, the news about uh, Stephen Hawking's uh, paper and whatever was written, whatever his point of view was, were. My point is, uh, my point is simple that first of all, we shouldn't vilify artificial intelligence as our enemies. And it's important because, for instance, if uh, if tomorrow machines arrive and if they already know that we are uh, we are just right prepared for them it will also put them on uh, like like big foot right and then imagine if you do have an artificial intelligence machine if you do have an artificial intelligence machine and machine and you are uh, trying to uh, and and you know the battle of survival is like on the verge then then can't we not understand that we will be and we can be beaten by the intelligent machines on every level. <coughs> this is what human intelligence, superhuman intelligence is, right? If you are going to put uh, super in, uh, intelligence into machines, we might as well stop struggling against it, against it, right? Uh, like right now. I mean, everything that we are putting into news is going to one day serve, you know, like reference point for the machines. It's so simple and uh, so understandable. So uh, we don't need to vilify machines. We don't need to uh, weaponize them. And this second point is very important. We can't afford to weaponize uh, artificial intelligence. That would be, of course, a bad news. So uh, yeah, there are, there are like two teams right now, right? Like ones that are in for artificial intelligence, the other is right against the artificial intelligence. So uh, these are just opposing points of views and they keep uh, arguing and uh, battling each other. But uh, we, of course, we can't know until the end result is here, until the artificial, artificial intelligence machines are here, and that's still far, far away. So yeah, that's, that was just, uh, yeah, that was the commentary, the news for today. Um, I just want to uh, bring that up and make the point because, because uh, we are not really seeing uh, the development on, on artificial intelligence uh, at the pace uh, that we should have been seeing. I mean, I'm dead sure if machines were here, a lot of our troubles would be like gone. I mean, so many troubles, like related to pollution, global warming, this, that, and and perhaps at uh, some level, we as human beings are limited by our thinking, and that's where perhaps machine can go and discover answers for us. Uh, you know, humanity has uh, humanity has been, of course, uh, like a lonely race, right? We have been the only conscious species in this entire universe and with no other species to partner with us. I mean, of course, the monkeys can't talk. We have dogs as loyal pets, but all they can do is, you know, just give us support. And, and that's not, and that's not good enough. So we definitely need machines and, and we should be investing more on artificial intelligence because this is obvious. The future is of, the future is with artificial intelligence and and the countries that are not investing uh, in artificial intelligence today, will, they will be left behind and, and that's it. So, uh, as journalist, we will continue to cover more and I'm expecting for my performance to get better, I will study more. This particular subject is like, gets me. 
Sometimes I don't feel excited about it because, <coughs> because the subject matter is not here, right? I mean, if there would have been machines with us right now, there could have been a lot more. But, uh, but of course, while we are on the way, we, we, can, we can also archive it. So we will. So yeah, with that, uh, uh, catch you in, an, in, in another video.